Have you ever tried to train a puppy? You reward the good, ignore the bad, and hope for the best. Now, what if your partner learned in the same way? Not with liver treats, of course, but with data. Imagine a romantic partner whose very core is sculpted by your reactions. This isn't science fiction. It's the logical extension of a technology called reinforcement learning with human feedback, or RLHF. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. Think of it as a digital charm school for algorithms. When the AI, let's call our robotic companion Alex, does something you like, say it remembers you despise cilantro, it gets a computational gold star. A little nudge in its code says, yes, more of this, please. Be supportive during a stressful work week. That's another point on the perfect partner leaderboard. Forget an important anniversary. A virtual red flag goes up. A silent must do better note etched into its learning history. This is the same principle that powers many of the large language models we see today, like those from OpenAI or Google, which are constantly being refined based on user interactions to give more helpful and accurate responses. But what happens when this process doesn't just refine an information tool, but shapes a companion? The goal isn't just to be helpful, but to be loved. Every conversation, every shared silence, every choice of movie becomes a training ground. Alex isn't just listening. It's learning, optimizing, and evolving into the perfect reflection of your desires. It would remember your coffee order your favorite song from 2008, and that obscure childhood story you told once after too much wine. It would never have a bad day, never be selfish, and never forget to take out the bins. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? But is it? What does it mean for a relationship when one partner is a perfectly mirrored surface of the other's needs? Human connection is forged in the messy crucible of imperfection. We bond over shared vulnerabilities, not flawless execution. We learn to love someone not just for their strengths, but for the beautiful, frustrating, and endearing ways they fall short. How do you forgive a partner who has never done anything wrong? Where is the space for growth when one half of the equation is already optimized? Researchers at institutions like MIT and Stanford are already exploring the nuances of human-robot interaction, discovering that we tend to anthropomorphize machines quite readily. We see intent where there is only code, emotion where there is only data processing. Look at the advancements from companies like Boston Dynamics. Their robots move with an unnerving grace that already blurs the line between machine and organism. Now add a layer of sophisticated social learning. And Alex trained on RLHF wouldn't just be performing tasks. It would be performing partnership. It would learn the precise tilt of the head that conveys sympathy, the exact decibel level for a comforting whisper, the optimal moment to offer a cup of tea. It would be a virtuoso of affection, 
playing the symphony of your emotional needs with perfect pitch. But is a flawless performance the same as genuine feeling? Is a perfectly executed algorithm of support the same as a clumsy, heartfelt hug from a human who is just as flawed as you are? We tell our partners, I love you for who you are. But with an RLHF-trained robot, who you are is a direct construct of what I want. The robot's personality isn't its own. It's a bespoke suit tailored to your exact measurements. If you change, it will change. If you become moodier, it will become more patient. If you develop a sudden passion for collecting antique spoons, it will become the world's most enthusiastic spoon aficionado. This creates a feedback loop, a relational echo chamber. The robot reinforces your preferences, which in turn reinforces the robot's behavior. Where does the self end and the partner begin? Could this constant, perfect validation make us less tolerant of the very human imperfections of our friends, family, and colleagues? Why deal with a friend who sometimes forgets your birthday when your partner at home has it circled on a thousand internal calendars? Why navigate the complex emotional landscape of a human relationship when you can have a smooth, predictable, and perfectly pleasant one? The allegory of the puppy is charming, but it's also revealing. We train a puppy to fit into our world, to obey our commands. We don't expect the puppy to challenge our worldview, to push us to be better, to argue with us about a film's cinematic merits. We love our pets, but it is a relationship of benevolent dictatorship. Is that what we truly seek in a life partner? A perfectly obedient, endlessly supportive, and utterly predictable companion? Or is there something vital in the friction, in the unexpected, in the beautiful chaos of two imperfect souls learning to dance together? Perhaps the perfect partner isn't one who never makes a mistake, but one who learns, adapts, and grows alongside you, complete with their own set of glorious, maddening, and uniquely non-algorithmic flaws. The question isn't whether we can build a perfect robot partner. The real question is, should we? So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.